Hello everyone. Welcome to another statics example video. Uh, today we're going to do one of the examples from chapter 2.1 to 2.3. It's an example that a lot of students struggled with uh, and so I think it's a good example for me to do as a video. In this example we have a bracket that has a force F that is applied uh, coming out of it. When we look at this particular problem we see that we have some U axes, some V axes, and then some additional axes, which is 90 degrees relative to U. And so what we're asked to do is we're asked to resolve the force F into components along the U and V axes and determine the magnitude of these components. And we're given the magnitude of F as 34 pounds. So let's go ahead and use our process in order to solve this problem. So the first thing that we want to do when we're trying to solve problems is we want to identify our knowns and our unknowns. What are we given? We're given the magnitude of F, which is 34 pounds. If we look at our diagram, we, we find that it is 30 degrees on the U-axis, and that's pretty much the things that we're given. We're also given the orientation of the v-axis, where the v-axis is 15 degrees on, let's call this additional axis y, just because that's what we usually would. Now what are our unknowns? What are the things that we're asked to find for this problem, or what are some things that we could find? Well, one thing that we could find is the angle that is uh, in between F and V, so that's one supplementary unknown. Let's call that angle gamma. So we'll say gamma is some unknown, some unknown dimensional property. And then there's also the unknown magnitudes of FU and FV. So let's go ahead and say the magnitude of FU is an unknown and the magnitude of FV is an unknown. So we've basically broken this down, this problem down into knowns. Let's color these knowns as, as uh, blue. And unknowns, unknown, the core unknowns, which are in red, uh, the magnitudes of U and V components. And then a dimensional unknown, gamma, which we can find using geometry. So now, after we've listed our knowns and unknowns, we've kind of analyzed the problem, let's go ahead and simplify the diagram above into a free body diagram. So we take the knowledge that we have from that. First we want to craft our coordinates. We have U and we have V. And then we want to put in our, our known, so let's go ahead and put in F. And I like to just use everything in variable form, and at the end put in the actual numbers, because it's easier to kind of think of these problems in terms of variables. Then I like to put in my dimensions. What is the dimension for this? It's 30 degrees. The dimension here is 15 degrees. And there's some unknown dimension, gamma. And then we put in our unknown forces. The force that's directed along U and the force that is directed along V. So now that we've identified our knowns and unknowns and we've crafted a, a simplified free body diagram, now let's go ahead and try to think about applying theory. Now in the section 2.1 to 2.3, we learn about the application of the parallelogram rule as well as the triangle rule. And what did we learn about the parallelogram rule? We learned that it's a parallelogram that's formed of the components of a resultant force which allows us to determine the direction and magnitude of that resultant force. In this problem, we're asked to find the components FU and FV, and we're given the resultant. But we can still use that parallelogram 
to help uh, to, 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 to do the opposite and go from the resultant to the components. So let's go ahead and start with the parallelogram. We start with our components as they are, meeting um, uh, end to end. We have FU here and FV here. And then we form a parallelogram of these that leads to a single result. So I'm just going to shift the color here to make it a little distinct. We're forming a parallelogram where this opposite side here is equal to FV and has the same direction. And this other opposite side here is equal to FU and has the same direction. And the point at which this, this parallelogram meets is going to denote the direction of our force resultant, which is something we already know. It's already given to us, which is F. Okay? So now, with this parallelogram, we need to fill in the interior angles. And that's where finding out what gamma is becomes important. So looking at our free body diagram, we can really quickly find what gamma is. We know that between a 90 degree, well, between two axes, two complementary axes, there's a 90 degrees of angle. So 90 degrees is going to be equal to 15 degrees plus 30 degrees plus gamma. And when we rearrange and solve, gamma is equal to 90 degrees minus 45 degrees, so gamma is equal to 45 degrees. So now that we have gamma, let's go ahead and look at what we've created with our parallelogram. We see we have our resultant and then we have our FV and that gamma sits in between those two and we see the same thing here in our parallelogram. So we can say that gamma is here and it's 45 degrees. Similarly when we look at our free body diagram we see that the angle between FU and F is 30 degrees. So we can fill that angle in here as 30 degrees. So now we found the, the angle in one quarter of our parallelogram. Now the interesting thing to note is that since we have a parallelogram and the sides, the opposite sides, are equal, our angles should also, also be equal. So applying that rule, we'll find that we have 45 degrees here and we have 30 degrees here. Now what we can do is one of two things. We can sum up the total angles inside of this entire par uh, parallelogram, which is 360 degrees, to, in order to find this corner and in that corner, which are equal to each other. Or we can treat one half or one, one triangle of the parallelogram by itself and find the 180 degrees inside of it to find this particular angle here. Um, so in, in this case, we're going to extend to the triangle rule and find that 180 degrees. We'll find the missing angle. So let's go ahead and, and do step four, which is applying the triangle rule. We simply replicate one of the triangles in our parallelogram. Either one would work. I, I'm going to go with the bottom one just because that's the one I want to go with today. And let me actually make this a little bit easier for myself and copy it. And paste it. And now we have our triangle. The only thing missing is F. So now that we have this triangle, we know that inside of the triangle there is a 180 degrees. And that's the total sum of the angles inside of a triangle. And we have two of the angles, and, and one angle is missing. So let's go ahead and do the 30 plus the 45 plus the missing angle. Let's call that one alpha, just because I like alpha. And let's uh, rearrange and solve for alpha. 
you'll find that alpha is equal to 180 minus 75. So alpha is equal to 105 degrees. Okay, so alpha is equal to 105 degrees. So now that we've done this, we've pretty much found all the information that we're going to need in order to solve this problem. And uh, let me go ahead here and copy this portion to another page. so that we can continue solving the problem. So now that we've found the angles that are inside of this triangle, let's go ahead and apply another theory that we learned in class, the law of signs. And this law of signs describes the relationship between the magnitudes of the sides of the triangles and the interior angles of those triangles. And so let's go ahead and apply it, where we would have the magnitude of F divided by the sine of alpha, which is the opposite angle, uh, well, the, the, the angle that's across from it. We will have the magnitude FU divided by 45 degrees, which is the opposite angle to it and then F, the magnitude FV divided by the sine of 30 degrees. So we're taking that angle that is, that is opposite to it. Now let's look at this equation. What are the things that we know? What are the things that we don't know? Well, we know the magnitude of F. Let's make that blue. We don't know the magnitude of FU. It's one of the core things we need to find. And we don't know the magnitude of FV. And we just found alpha at 105 degrees. So let's go ahead and use this equation, rearrange, and solve for our unknowns. So let's solve for FU. If we were to just take this portion of the law of sines, we'll find that FU is equal to F times the sine of 45 degrees divided by the sine of, let's go ahead and put the number in there, 105. And when we do that, when we plug it into our calculators, um, what should we get? Well, let's replace F here with the 35, I mean the 34 pounds. 34 pounds times the sine of 445 divided by the sine of 105 should give us 24.8897. And then we can take this number and round it to get 24.9, approximately 24.9. So that is one of the answers that we need to solve this problem. Now, Let's take the law of sines and solve for FV by taking these two portions of the law of sines. And we can simply rearrange and we find that FV is equal to 34 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 105 degrees, which will be equal to some number. Let's plug it into our calculators and we should find um, 34 times sine of 30 divided by sine of 105. We should get 17.5997, which we can then round to three significant digits as 17.6. Now, important thing to remember or to always note when we're solving these problems is to make sure that we include the units in our final answer. So we have 24.9 pounds and we have 17.6 pounds as our final answer. And so 
Uh, the last step that we do when we want to solve these problems is we want to verify. We want to review all of the steps that we uh, executed towards solving the problems. We want to make sure that we look at our knowns and unknowns and make sure that we're actually solving what the problem is asking us to um, and make sure that we're showing all of our steps because showing steps is how you prove that your answer is correct. Okay, so we look through it. Okay, we've got our knowns and unknowns. We found the, we, we, we had two unknowns as well as a dimensional unknown. We created our free body diagram. We calculated that gamma angle. We did the parallelogram rule. And then we took a portion of that parallelogram as our triangle rule. We found the angle alpha in that triangle. And then we applied the law of sines and determined if we had the correct number of uh, equations for the number of unknowns. And we did. We had two equations, this portion here, and then these two portions here as two equations. And then when we solve, we make sure that we're applying the correct values, that magnitude of f is 34, sine of 45, sine of 30, and we have our final answer. And that's how we solve this particular problem from the book. Thank you for taking the time and watching the video. I hope that you find it as a useful resource as you prepare for statics.